preface this review by telling you what I've been using before I bought this current laptop to be my daily driver. I had a custom built desktop for gaming and power hungry work, and a cheap $250 Lenovo Yoga 11e for in class note taking. I decided, for various reasons, to sell my gaming desktop at the end of November and investigate getting a laptop as a replacement. I initially was looking at gaming laptops, but I found them to be the worst of both worlds for me. Annoyingly loud and on the lower end of what is considered acceptable gaming performance, that is unless you're willing to drop over 3K for a 1080 Max-Q, but bulky and with a middling battery life that makes toting to class and taking notes all day away from home a challenge as well. Then Razer announced the latest quad-core blade stealth, and my focus turned to the world of modern ultrabooks. Sporting a small chassis, premium build quality, and a decent battery, these devices are perfect for light work in class. But now, with the 8th gen Intel Core U series, you can also get true quad cores and have decent performance in workstation tasks. As a gamer, the final piece of the puzzle is the USB-C ports with Thunderbolt 3. External GPUs promise a type of gaming that is portable, but also high frame rate and great quality. Razer's latest stealth is not what I chose, though. That's because right around the time I started seriously looking at Ultrabooks, Dell released the latest model of their XPS 13. Now it's definitely not perfect, especially when it comes to ports, but it checked off a lot of the boxes I was looking for. Great battery life, premium build quality, silent when on the go, but powerful when you need it to be. Also, dat bezel, I admit. The fantastic looking screen was a big pull for me. I like beautiful tech, and most people who say they want specs above all else are kidding themselves. There's a reason Alienware ships more gaming laptops than, say, Sager. The box showed up just in time. I'd been living on the cheapo Lenovo for three months, and it was really starting to wear on me. Then, the day after I ordered my XPS with most of the trimmings, 16 gigs of RAM, i7, 4K touchscreen, and a 512 gig SSD, the Lenovo died in the middle of a BIOS update and is bricked unless I choose to send it back in for repairs. I had to finish one of my class essays on my OnePlus 3T in the Word app. Never again. The unboxing experience is nice. Not quite Apple levels of an experience, but it's more than the usual closed cell foam around a brown box. This time, it's a black box. First impressions. Wow, this thing is tiny for a 13.3 inch screen. Look at my old Lenovo. It has an 11 inch screen and is bigger than the XPS in every single dimension. When I heft the Dell, it doesn't feel tanky in the way my Lenovo did with its thick plastic and rubberized edges, but it feels sturdy. It's like stepping into an Audi after driving a Corolla. They're both well built, but each is known for a different kind of quality. The next big part was the screen. It's excellent. Super bright, sharp, and the color makes my external monitor look washed out in comparison. My roommate's 2015 era MacBook looks positively ancient next to this thing. Now, I can't say using a high DPI screen on Windows is entirely painless, but it's so much better than it used to be. I was even able to spin up a Linux Mint VM and get that to scale nicely. Hooray! The keyboard experience is good. I type on a full-size keyboard with cherry browns and custom keycaps, but I don't mind using this backlit keyboard at all. Some people may bulk at the half-height arrow keys, but Dell put a nice bevel between the half-height rows so you can easily feel the keys apart. And also, note the small size. They didn't have as much to work with as other competing laptops. The key travel is less clicky than a current MacBook scissor switch, but you do have more distance. I personally prefer this trade-off, and I'm a little more confident in this keyboard's repairability compared to the MacBooks down the road. Ports are… manageable. The 2018 XPS has followed the industry trend of shedding ports, trading full-size Type-A ports for three USB-C ports. It also shrunk the full-size SD reader to microSD, but it keeps the combination headphone mic port on the right side by the hinge. I should note that one positive of having three USB-C ports is 
you can plug Dell's included charger into any of them for charging. Nice! I bought a travel adapter with full-size USB ports and HDMI out, but I fell prey to something that plagues USB-C adapters on Amazon, namely hit or miss QC. My HDMI port began cutting out, possibly due to how the board is handling power, and I've decided to return it for a different brand of adapter. I may make a follow-up video on this later. Dell does include one Type-C to Type-A adapter for your thumb drives, but I'd suggest getting a wireless mouse that uses Bluetooth if you need more than the trackpad on the go. Personally, I'm sticking with just the trackpad and the touchscreen. The glass surface is pleasant, the touch surface is an okay size, it uses Windows Precision Drivers, oh, and it's centered. For the life of me, I cannot understand why device makers put the trackpad toward the left side of laptops when 90% of people using trackpads are going to use the right hand. I'm left-handed, but since most of us grew up with mice on the right side of the computer... Initially, I was concerned about fan noise. It seemed Dell had put a really aggressive fan profile on the machine, with the fans spinning up and high RPMs, even when the CPU was in the 50 Celsius range. But the next day, my fears diminished when I noted the fans were much less aggressive on battery power, and as I write this review, I noticed they're spinning, but at a low speed. It seems my initial glut of installs and upgrades was just sending things into overdrive. In terms of pricing, I picked up my machine on Amazon for $1,900. It's not the best in price to performance, but I was willing to pay the early adopter tax on this one. If you want better specs for your money, look at last year's XPS, the Blade Stealth, Yes, it's actually two to three hundred dollars cheaper for about the same specs as this, or the LG Gram. Final thoughts? I love it. I feel comfortable with the idea that this will be my primary computer for the next four years, and I fully intend on snagging an eGPU for when the market drops a little. If or when the market drops a little. <clears throat> Using this laptop reminds me of why I like tech, because when it's done well and you're willing to pay for it, modern computers really have it all. I was struck by a memory of helping my grandma set up her old, thick, beige HP laptop to use her home internet about 10 years ago. The screen was small, dim, and had washed out color. The trackpad was maybe two inches on its longest side, and didn't register touches every single time. The machine ran Windows XP, but only barely. I thought to myself then that I'd never use a laptop as my primary computer. Well today, thanks to the XPS, I am.